Hi everyone and welcome to another tutorial here on www.unitycookie.com. This is just going to be a quick look at how you can save data between your scenes and even indeed between entire game sessions using the player prefs option. So right here we're looking at just the uh, Super Zombie Smackdown 12, uh, just a test game sort of thing here so we can have a little better than just a simple GUI. Same one used for the changing scenes if you haven't checked out that quick tip as well. So let's look how this works. We're going to be saving some data between the scenes. If I go ahead and play this and go to high scores, if there's something already in there, it shows it. So we have a high score. We can clear the scores so they're all gone and now it shows nothing. Go back to the start. Play the game. Let's pretend we made a high score in this exciting game. Exit the game and then we go back to the high scores and there we have your uh, your high score saved there. And as you can tell, if I exit and restart the game, it's still there. It doesn't get lost at all. Even if I clear it and go back in, it's keeping it exactly as we had it the last time we used it. So let's take a look at how this actually works. So in the high scores scene here, we have just a couple buttons, uh, clear scores, and then we actually show the score itself. Let's take a look at the GUI high scores, which is the script that I have on the high scores scene. And that's about good. I guess we need a bit more here. So in this scene, again, there's the clear scores button. And that does something pretty simple. It's going to delete all the player prefs. So this will make a little more sense once we get into how this all works. But all it does is use the player prefs dot delete all function. So just call that delete all, and we'll simply clear out anything at all you have in the player prefs. So this can be good and bad. Uh, definitely try the player prefs dot delete key, and then the name of the player prefs if you want to just delete one. Otherwise, this will delete everything in the entire uh, in all the player prefs. So in this case, it is what we want since we're clearing out all the scores, so we use it as such. Uh, then down below, we're using a player prefs dot has key to check if there is a score in there. And just looking at how this is put together, the player prefs, so we have, since we have the git below here also, works in a pretty straightforward manner. You simply do player prefs dot and then use a git string to get the value that's in that player pref. And then every player pref is set by a name. You don't use, uh, you know, normally you're, you're used to looking for variables as something like maybe this probably, but for whatever reason, player pref search for it, player prefs, um, search for it, searches for it as an exact string. So you just do dot get string, name of it. Same thing for an int, and you can also use floats. So player prefs can save floats, strings, and ints, those three things, which sounds kind of limiting at first, but you'll realize as you start using them, just get a little creative and you can save uh, just about anything at all via player prefs. Just takes a little extra creativity and work. So uh, again, pretty simple with that. And up here, uh, sorry, as I was going on, there's the player prefs that has key is a special uh, a special thing you can call to check if the key actually exists. So this is just making sure uh, should we show a player a score only if this some sort of score has actually been recorded. Otherwise, of course, we just say no scores yet. So let's take a look at how these scores are actually recorded, and we'll come back to this after that to make sure it makes uh, good sense. So if we go to the in-game and look at the GUI in-game, just put a quick little cheat in here so we can see easily how this is working. There's a player prefs uh, in the start function start. So as soon as this game starts in this case, uh, and we do a set int. So this is how we create a key or change it. So we have two two variables in here. First is the, the name of the key. So score one. Again, that's in a string format, and then the actual score. So we're setting an int. So we type an int in there. Then I have player prefs that set string player name. And that's a, again the first part is a string. That's the actual name of this player prefs key. And then the actual data inside of it is zombinator. So that's a, a string obviously since we're setting a string. And lastly, we're gonna do a player prefs.save to make sure we keep that player prefs data. It will be uh, it, or it won't actually be saved until you exit the scene otherwise. So it's good to save it right away if you don't intend to exit right away after after entering any data into player prefs. So pretty simple to set them. So now that we have, we see how these are set, if we look back at the high scores, it probably makes a little more sense how this is working. Again, it's doing get string, and this is player name. If you remember, this is the string that we set as the name. And then it does a get string, or sorry, get int, which is 
score one as the name. Sorry, the name of the key. It can be a little confusing. Score one there. And after a little bit, you'll just get used to it. For me, it was a little odd at first. Again, that they didn't do it something like score number or such, you know, a regular variable. But, you know, just is the way it is. So it'll make sense after you've used it a few times that way. And that's pretty much it for saving into the player preps. Again, super useful for, obviously, in this case, you know, high scores, uh, saving inventory numbers, the level you're on in your game, uh, all sorts of things that you can do with this. It saves it completely. So if you're using a web player even, I think it stores it right into the downloaded files of some sort. If you're using a standalone, it gets saved into the registry. Um, that way, if the game, if they close it, if they restart it, Anything like that, this data will still be there, so it's a good way to save any of the player progress that's going on. You don't want to lose whenever they restart the game or enter a new scene. It's a good, simple way to do that. Just remember, of course, to use the .save command once you're ready to save what you've added. And that's really it for the player preps. Hope you guys enjoyed that, and hope it's awfully useful for you. Notice for me. Thanks. Bye.